My name is Nikki. And I'm Katie. And we did our presentation on makers. Under makers, the cost of an asset is recovered over a predetermined period that is generally shorter than the useful life of the asset or the period the asset is used to produce income. The makers rules were designed to encourage investment, improve productivity, and simplify the law and its administration. Makers provide separate cost recovery tables for real property and personal property. Write-offs are not available for land because it does not have a determinable useful life. Cost recovery allowances for real property other than land are based on recovery lives specified in the law. The IRS provides tables that specify cost recovery allowances for personality and for realty. Makers provides that the cost recovery basis of eligible personality and certain realty is recovered over 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, or 20 years. Property is classified by recovery period. Accelerated depreciation is allowed for these six makers classes of property. 200% declining balance is used for the 3, 5, 7, and 10 year classes with a switch over to straight line depreciation when it yields a larger amount. 150% declining balance is allowed for the 15 and 20 year classes with an appropriate straight line switchover. Taxpayers may elect the straight line method to compute cost recovery allowances for each of these classes of property. Certain property is not eligible for accelerated cost recovery and must be depreciated under an alternative depreciation system. The first class under makers is the three year 200% class with asset depreciation range midpoints of four years and less. The three-year class property includes tractor units for use over the road, any horse that is not a racehorse and is more than 12 years old at the time it is placed in service, any racehorse that is more than two years old at the time it is placed in service, breeding hogs, and special tools used in the manufacture of motor vehicles such as dyes, fixtures, molds, and patterns. Five-year property includes property with ADR midpoints of more than four years and less than 10 years. This includes things like automobiles and taxis, light and heavy general purpose trucks, buses, trailers and trailer mounted containers, typewriters, calculators, and copiers, computers and other peripheral equipment, breeding and dairy cattle, and rental appliances, furniture, and carpets. Seven-year class property has ADR midpoints of 10 years and more and less than 16 years. Seven-year class property includes office furniture, fixtures and equipment, breeding and workhorses, agricultural machinery and equipment, and railroad tracks. Ten-year class property includes property with an ADR midpoint of 16 years and more and less than 20 years. This includes items like vessels, barges, tugs, and similar water transportation equipment. Assets used for petroleum refining or for the manufacture of grain and grain milled products, sugar and sugar products, or vegetable oils and vegetable oil products. It also includes single-purpose agricultural or horticultural structures. 15-year class property has ADR midpoints of 20 years and more and less than 25 years. This class includes properties such as land improvements, assets used for industrial steam and electric generation and distribution systems, assets used in the manufacture of cement, assets used in pipeline transportation, electric utility nuclear production plants, and municipal wastewater treatment plants. 20-year class property includes property with an ADR midpoint of 25 years and more. This includes farm buildings, except for single-purpose agricultural and horticultural structures, gas utility distribution facilities, water utilities, and municipal sewer. Makers views property as placed in service in the middle of the first year. This is known as the half-year convention. For example, Three-year property placed in service in January is considered to be placed in service in the middle of the year. This means that the taxpayer must wait an extra year to recover the cost of depreciable assets. Makers also allows for a half year of cost recovery 
in the year of disposition or retirement. The Economic Stimulus Act of 2008 provided for additional depreciation in the first year on qualified property acquired after December 31, 2007 and before January 1, 2009 and placed into service before January 1, 2009. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Tax Act of 2009 made an additional 50% cost recovery in the year the asset is placed into service. It must be qualified property placed into service before January 1, 2009. This includes most types of new property other than buildings. New property includes original or first use property. Use property to the new taxpayer does not qualify. AFD is taken in the year in which qualifying property is placed in service. The taxpayer may elect not to take the AFD. This is an additional first year depreciation example. Morgan acquires a five-year class asset on March 20, 2009 for $50,000. Morgan's cost recovery deduction for 2009 is $30,000 computed as follows. So first you would do the 50% additional first year depreciation, which is calculated by taking the $50,000 cost times 50%, which equals $25,000. Next you would calculate the maker's cost recovery. To do this, you would take the $50,000 cost minus the $25,000 additional depreciation times 20%, which comes from Table 8.1. This would equal $5,000. Adding these numbers, you get the total cost recovery of $30,000. This is Table 8.1 used in the previous example. As you can see, we got the 20% maker's depreciation from the five-year class life, year one. Here's an example of how the maker's percentages are calculated for the five-year property for year one. You take 200% divided by five years and multiply it by one half for the half-year convention. This equals 20%. For the second year, you take the basis, subtract the quantity of 20% times the basis, and then multiply it by 200% divided by five. This will eventually lead you to 80% times 40%, which equals the 32%. The mid-quarter convention applies if more than 40% of the value of property other than eligible real estate is placed in service during the last quarter of the year. Property acquisitions are grouped by the quarter they were acquired. In the first quarter, it's 10.5 months, second quarter, 7.5 months, third quarter, 4.5 months, fourth quarter, 1.5 months. In the quarter of disposition, cost recovery is allowed for the half quarter. Here's a mid-quarter convention example. Silver Corporation acquires the following five-year class property in 2010. On February 15th, they acquired property worth $200,000. On July 10th, they acquired property worth $400,000 and on December 5th, they acquired property worth $600,000 with a total of $1,200,000. If Silver Corp uses the statutory percentage method, the cost recovery allowances for the first two years are computed as indicated on the next slide. Since more than 40% of the acquisitions are in the last quarter, the mid-quarter convention applies. The cost recovery allowances for 2010 are calculated as follows. For February 15th, $200,000 is multiplied by 0.35, which comes from Table 8.2. This comes to $70,000. The $400,000 is then multiplied by 0.15, which equals $60,000. $600,000 times 0.05 equals $30,000. When you add them all together, you come to $160,000, which is the total recovery for 2010. 2011 is a similar calculation, except for we use the second year. This is a partial table of maker's accelerated depreciation for personal property assuming the mid-quarter convention.